Because what I have found is that a lot of us are functioning day to day with a servant mentality and not a son mentality. And so we're working for God all the time. We come to the end of the day and we hope and pray and cross our fingers that we've done enough to please God when we ought to be coming to Him as sons and daughters, just receiving what He's done for us, believing that sons and daughters... Don't worry about... Sonship will not create a lazy church. Sonship will create a free church. And a free people will always produce more than a people in bondage any day of the week. And so there will be more production that comes out of a house full of sons and daughters than there ever would out of a house full of slaves. And so I'm out just trying to take grave clothes off of resurrected people. Jesus... Jesus raises Lazarus from the dead, looks at his disciples and says, now you loose him and let him go. So Jesus does not pull grave clothes off of resurrected people. He's already done the finished work in raising people up. What we have to do as God's people is begin to release our brothers and our sisters from the guilt, shame, and condemnation that comes from this world and from the enemy, and sadly, often from the church. This is what Jesus meant when He breathed on His disciples and said, Receive you the Holy Spirit. He said, To whomever sins you remit, they are remitted. Whoever sins you retain, they are retained. Jesus wasn't giving you the ability to forgive a sinner of their sins. Jesus was giving you the ability to help people either retain or release the condemnation that comes with sin. So every time you open your mouth, you have that power over someone. You have the power to slap them with guilt, shame, and condemnation. You have the power to make them feel as if they haven't lived up to it, worked up to it, done enough for God, as if they're not slaving hard enough for the Father. That's easy to do because all we have to do is stack works against someone else's works. We're always going to be outworked. Someone's always going to have read more, prayed more, fasted more, gave more, did more, done more, went more. Someone's always going to beat us if it's a list of righteousness and works, and we're always going to have a slave and a servant mentality. And we're always going to come up short. But when we come into the knowledge of sonship, this, this entire experience with the Father will stop being passion-driven, purpose-driven, and destiny-driven and start being presence-drawn. Man, we've been purpose-driven until there's nothing left but ashes at what used to be a burning bush. Moses doesn't turn aside to see a, a brush fire. We see enough of those in California. You don't, you, you don't get excited to see a brush fire. You know that that means consumption and problems. Moses doesn't turn aside to see a brush fire, but he does turn aside to see a bush burn that is not consumed. I think it's about time that the church has a bush that burns and is not consumed. That there be a light that go forth from the people of God in which people don't see a trail of tears, dust, and broken bones behind us in our wake because we've been working for God for so long that there's no joy left, and there's no happiness left, and there's no comfort left, and there's no life left. Your life and your joy and your happiness should never be sacrificed at the altar of ministry and never be sacrificed at the altar of the church. You are destined to love life and see good days, 1 Peter 3.10. It's the destiny of God's redeemed because this is not an old covenant world of performances and do's and don'ts. It's a new covenant world of it is finished. And it's been finished on our behalf.